healthy soil ensures healthy living so in the last video we learned how soil is formed and what are the different factors that influence the formation of the soil we also learned that if soil is divided it will be divided into four distinct layers right out of the four layers the two most important layers are the top soil and the subsoil we further learned how soil plays an important role in our lives so today in this video we'll be learning about the erosion of the soil how soil gets eroded again and again and then the different ways that we could use to conserve the soil it is very important to conserve the soil as soil provides important things and plays an important role in our lives so different agents like wind rainfall rivers and also human activities like deforestation mining and construction may lead to the erosion of the soil they may lead to the removal of the top layer of the soil that actually contains the important nutrients minerals and the organic matter or humus we learned in the last video that this organic matter increases or adds to the fertility of the soil so if this very top layer is removed then the fertility of the soil also goes away that leads to the overall degradation of the soil therefore the removal of the top soil by running water and wind is known as soil erosion it may also be caused due to human activities now besides the different agents as just mentioned like wind rainfall human activities and also river things that can lead to the further erosion of soil may also include overgrazing so we know that agricultural fields are used for livestock rearing so if this is continuous and it is in intense quantity or intense rate then it can lead to the degradation of the soil so the cattle tends to eat away all the vegetation or the crops on the field that loosens the rock so there is no plant or crop that can hold the soil together so it weakens the soil layers and makes it more exposed to the agents of erosion so therefore this continuous exposure to the agents of erosion can lead to severe soil erosion or huge fall in the quality of the soil therefore overgrazing can play a very important role in the degradation of the soil quality now other than these forest fires contribute to soil erosion how is that so forest fires you know leads to the burning up of all the vegetation on the land so once the vegetation cover is gone there is no hold on the soil the soil becomes very very weak so the agents of weathering are able to erode the land even faster thus the erosion rate increases to a great extent right so forest fires contribute to soil erosion other than these soil degradation due to excessive use of fertilizers also takes place now how is that so the overuse of chemical fertilizers intends or implies that monoculture farming is happening now what do we mean by monoculture farming well it means that no crop rotation is being practiced means the growth of one particular crop or plant is being done again and again on the same field this leads to the degradation of soil by the extraction of the same kind of nutrients from the soil also the accumulation of these chemical fertilizers leads to the compaction of the soil layers what is compaction of the soil layers well compaction of the soil layers means the soil particles tend to be compacted or brought together very tightly so the growth of the crops or the growth of the crop roots is not that healthy the roots are not being able to expand properly and therefore they're not being able to reach out to the water resources or the nutrients or minerals in the soil so the healthy crop growth is not being able to take place therefore excess use of chemical fertilizers may lead to compaction of the soil therefore the crops cannot grow properly and then it eventually leads to the degradation of the soil therefore these two factors play important role in bringing down the quality of the soil 
Now that we have understood how soil erosion takes place due to different factors and different agents, we must also understand the two most common soil erosion are sheet erosion and gully erosion. Now coming to each at a time. So what exactly is sheet erosion? So there are certain areas that tend to experience torrential rainfall or heavy rainfall. This rainwater when flows over these land surfaces as shallow water sheets, it tends to erode the top layer of this land. So it takes away the top layer or the top sheet. This leads to sheet erosion. Therefore, sheet erosion is nothing but the removal of the top layer of the, the top sheet of the land surface due to different agents of erosion. Other than this, we have the gully erosion. So gully erosion takes place when water that was flowing over a certain area of land has now been channelized. So this after being channelized tends to cut through the soft clay soil and forms these gullies. This leads to the erosion of the soil and can therefore be termed as gully erosion. Right? So these are the two most common types of soil erosion that takes place. Sheet erosion as well as gully erosion. So now that we have understood what are the different factors that lead to soil erosion and how soil erosion takes place in different forms, right? So now we need to understand or we need to realize that soil conservation is very important. If we don't conserve the soil or if we don't protect the soil, then we'll be losing on a very important part of our lives. So what is soil conservation? Soil conservation refers to the protection of soil from the harmful effects of erosion so that it can be used by future generations. So if we don't conserve the soil now, then our future generations won't be able to use the soil that we are benefiting from. They won't be able to understand or realize how important the soil is in our lives. So the easiest and the most convenient method or rather the best way to conserve the soil is to plant more trees at our own gardens or nearby roads or wherever it is possible. So planting trees are the best ways to conserve soil and preventing deforestation can also help us a lot. We should avoid cutting trees and plant more trees to make up for the losses that has been caused by us humans over the years. Another way of conserving or protecting the soil is by creating these windbreak. Now what exactly is a windbreak? So we can plant trees along long distances perpendicular to the direction of the wind. Right? This method of planting is also known as shelter planting. Right? So these act as wind breaks against the dominant wind or the strong winds that could actually lead to the erosion of the soil if the plants weren't there. So this is an important way of conserving the soil or protecting the soil from agents of weathering. Other than planting trees and creating wind breaks, check dams can also help us conserve the soil. So check dam built over a river helps to prevent soil erosion by water. So what exactly do these check dams do? So these check dams controls or regulates the flow of the river or the speed of the river and helps in reducing the erosion caused by these flowing river. Right? So rock check dams is another example of the check dams that can help conserve soil. So these are two important ways how soil could be protected in the river areas or the river banks. So before moving on, could you help me answer this question? Why are check dams built over rivers and streams? Is it to prevent deforestation? or to prevent air pollution, or to prevent soil erosion, or rather to prevent global warming? Yes, the answer is to prevent soil erosion. Another very effective method of conserving the soil is afforestation. Now what exactly is afforestation? 
we have been learning about deforestation most of us are familiar with that word but what exactly is afforestation well the process of introducing tree seedlings to an area that has previously not been forested so an area that has been not used before or which has not been forested before is used to grow plants there tree seedlings are introduced and they are led to grow therefore forestation takes place so this is known as a forestation this is a very effective method and is used globally therefore a forestation practices like planting the trees on unused lands can help in holding the soil together thus making it very strong against the agents of weathering so far we were able to understand various methods by which we could conserve the soil for example the natural wind breaks the making of check dams and also afforestation are important and significant ways by which soil can be conserved and the degradation of the soil can be reduced to a huge extent some other important farming methods could also be adapted through which soil can be conserved so improved methods of farming will also protect the soil and what does these improved methods include it includes crop rotation and terrace farming now what exactly is crop rotation quite of us here know that monoculture is the growing of crops of a single crop in a particular piece of land over a certain period of time so if we keep growing the same crop again and again so that is if we keep on with the practice of monoculture on a similar piece of land then it will lead to soil degradation as it will take away the nutrients and minerals present in the soil so to increase the fertility of the soil and to maintain the nutrients of the soil it is important to practice crop rotation that is growing different types of crops at different periods of time on a particular plot of land so crop rotation helps to restore the nutrients in the soil it's a very effective method which has been taken up by various farmers in various places but people need to be made more aware of of this method of farming and it has to be adapted quite well next type is the terrace farming terrace farming is also known as contour plowing now terrace farming is usually practiced in elevated areas like hills or plateau regions now as we know hills and plateau regions have a slopey surface that is the rate of erosion is much higher as compared to plains so to avoid or prevent excess erosion of the soil and thus degrading the productivity of crops we can simply switch to terrace farming or contour plowing where steps are made and crops are grown on those contours or steps in this method of farming the erosion of soil is much more reduced and the surface runoff is also cut down to a huge extent so this is a very effective method or an improved method of farming that can help us conserve the soil right so in this lesson we were able to understand the importance of soil conservation we also looked at some very effective methods in which we could conserve the soil and we understood how by little steps we could avoid huge scale degradation of the soil so we need to be careful on our part and there needs to be more awareness program so that farmers could be made aware of the consequences of the methods that they are using and which are leading to degradation of soil they should be made aware of the improved methods of farming and the different technologies that could be used to keep their soil healthy and fertile so that overall crop production can be improved Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test 
get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now